Welcome to week 2 of our virtual instruction. Still here, Sir Justor Soriano to guide you in answering your modules in statistics and probability. In the past video lesson, we learned what a random variable is and its two types. This time, we will tackle mean and variance of a discrete random variable. So at the end of this video lesson, you are expected to compute the probabilities corresponding to a given variable, illustrate the mean and variance of a discrete random variable, and calculate the mean and variance of a discrete random variable. Let us start, so listen carefully, and learn. We recall that discrete random variables are random variables whose values are countable. Let us take this example to illustrate our lesson. So assume that in a family with three children, we are interested to know the number of boys. So in this case, there are discrete or countable possible outcomes. We list the possible outcomes as follows. Note that the number of possible outcomes can be computed using the fundamental counting principle. So as you recall, the fundamental counting principle works like this. In our example, we have three events since we are looking for the possible outcomes for three children. And each event has two choices, namely boy or girl. Since we have three events with two choices each, we just multiply them and we will come up with eight possible outcomes. Now, we let x as the representation of a random variable. Again, we call this discrete random variable since the values of x are countable. In our example, the values of our random variable x are 0, 1, 2, and 3. Since the number of boys in a family with 3 children can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. Notice that the number of outcomes is different for every possible values of x. To illustrate this, I encircled all the outcomes with red if x equals 0, green if x equals 1, blue if x equals 3, and yellow if x equals 4. So we can now complete the second column of our table based on the illustration. So to compute for the probability, we just need to count all the possible outcomes for each values of x over the total number of outcomes. This suggests that the probability of x is equal to 0 is 1 over 8, the probability of x equals 1 is 3 over 8, the probability of x equals 2 is 3 over 8, and the probability of x equals 3 is 1 over 8. For our next example, we let our random variable x as the sum of dots when a pair of dice is rolled. Using the fundamental counting principle, with two events and each event has six outcomes, we will arrive with 36 possible outcomes. The possible outcomes is shown in the table. The values of x ranges from 2 to 12 since those are the only possible sums of dots in the two dices. Based on our previous example, we can complete the table as follows. Now, we are going to compute for the mean, variance, and standard deviation. The formulas are listed on the right panel. This process is tedious, but if you are good with the spreadsheets, you can compute mean variance and standard deviation easier. So first, let us compute for the mean. We know that mean is the average of all the possible outcomes. Since we are dealing with weighted means, it is important to note that we first need to multiply our excess with its probability. Let us add one column to make our computation in proper order. Our third column would be our x times the probabilities of our x. On the first row, we have 2 times 1 over 36 is equal to 2 over 36. We continue this process up to the last row. Then we will use the formula for the mean. The formulas may look so complicated, but trust me, these are just simple arithmetic. The mean denoted by the Greek letter mi is equal to the Greek letter sigma times x times f of x, which is re read as the summation of x times f of x. We have done a little change of notation here. f of x pertains to the probability of a random variable x equals x, and x are the values of a random variable. 
So the mean is simply equal to the sum of all the values in our third row. You can use your calculator to add those or simply use a spreadsheet. This will yield to mean equals 7. The variance denoted by small letter sigma squared is equal to the summation of quantity x minus mean squared times f of x. To compute this orderly, we need to add two more columns in our table. The first column should be quantity x minus mean squared and the second column should be quantity x minus mean squared times f of x. As you can see, we have x minus mu or 2 minus 5 squared equals 25. And for the next one, we simply multiply our quantity x minus mu squared to f of x, which is 25 times 1 over 36, which results to 25 over 36. We repeat the process down to the last row and to get the variance, get the summation of all the values in our third column, which is 5.83. Lastly, to solve the standard deviation denoted by small letter sigma, we simply get the square root of the variance, which is a square root of 5.83 or 2.42. And that's it for our video lesson. I hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thanks for watching!